Hello and welcome to my award-winning Bangle Weaver tutorial. Today we're going to be upcycling your old jeans, button and all. And remember, don't waste it, weave it. So here are the tools of the trade. So to make this rather beautiful, sparkly um, denim bangle here, you will need a Kleshner bracelet bangle weaving tool, which is ready set up some 19 strand beadle on beading wire here which I prefer to use the thickest I can afford 49 if you can a wonderful pair of beadle on Italian side cutters a pair of snub nose pliers a pair of scissors some cotton to sew together your bits of denim forgive the plonks um, some bobbins Two of these, I prefer the large Kumihimo bobbins to put things on. Some denim strips from your old jeans, preferably with the button left on. I don't happen to have any with the button left on. I've been using them all up recently. And a two-hold bodkin. I like to use the one that Prim makes. And finally, some little wee crimps to put together your wire with. That is what you will require. What I would like to start with is to show you that I have pre-woven um, five rows of weaving with wire on. Now you will, let me just refer you back to um, a previous video that I have done where it shows you basic wire weaving. You see here we have the niche here, the little nick on the bangle weaver and that's where I have started and I have ended and placed a crimp in here on the row, or the, should I say the warp before the nick, where I have actually finished my weaving here. <clears throat> and you can count the rows, one, two, three, four, five, sorry, I'm a fibber, six rows here. That has taken me three meters of wire and I folded it in half before I stopped, before I, sorry, before I started and I stopped with a crimp here. Okay, so that's how we started doing the weave on this and that forms a good fundamental base for this particular weave. Now what I've done then is I've cut off lengthwise along the leg of the jean <clears throat> a strip of denim. And one of the things that I have learned to do is because you are going to be putting by the nick a little rolled up piece of denim. What I've done here is I have rolled the denim and I've secured it with a tiny couple of stitches. Um, any cotton will do for this. And then I have wound one end so I don't bore you witless with winding and twiddling bits of denim. And then what I will do here in order to prep the other side of my denim um, is I'm just going to pin this into my special beadboard here. Now, dependent on whether you care or not whether the dark side or the light side of the denim is showing is dependent on how you will wind it. If you really don't mind um, which side is showing, and I'm just going to show you, on this one, that here's the one I made earlier, I was kind of random about it, okay? On this one, I've decided that I'd like it to be dark blue. So what you do is start rolling it like this, and you keep on rolling, basically, um, so that you can see that the, the loose part of your winding provides you with um, the dark part of the denim. And all I am doing, which is going to be happening out of screen, is I am twiddling and rolling the denim. Okay, it looks a little bit like a Christmas decoration. You know when um, you were younger and you used to make those wonderful streamers? Well, it's just like that, except you keep twisting and twisting. Now, you're going to not see my hand in this bit, okay? But I'm going to keep twisting and twisting and twisting. And then I'm going to run my hand down it, rather like if I was going to be um, spinning. I would use the heat of my hand to put this little baby on to the felt tops before I start spinning. There we go. And I have almost literally finished twisting a full length. Now you will know it's the right 
way when actually when your twisted bit starts to curl in on itself okay so a couple more twiddles here sorry it's a bit boring to watch but can you see how that's going to twist on itself and then all I do quite simply is I will open the bobbin like that and I, you'll see me coming in to focus again okay folks I know how irritating it is um, when someone goes out of focus. However, coming nearer and nearer and nearer. There we go. Okay, and then I'm going to flip this down like this. And I've got both of them in the middle of this piece. I'm taking my pin out now. And I'm going to pop this over where the nick is. And I'm going to just quite simply start weaving. Now, one of the things I want to alert you to is both of my pieces of denim have been twisted away from the weaving tool. So now I'm going to start weaving. I've popped it over here by the niche and it's very simple as I have said before. This has to be one of the most effective and simple new um, means of creating jewellery I have discovered. As you can see I'm going around the back with that one and I'm pushing this one under. Whatever you do, if you go under or over, it doesn't matter as long as you always go under or you always go over. It seems to me that right-handers go over and left-handers go under. As I've said before, I have no idea why that is. So there we go. And you can see how effective this lovely um, denim bangle is as we're going around here. Okay, and you can also see the benefits of having twisted the denim because whilst you get these lovely little bits that um, pop out from the denim where it's starting to fray slightly, you also hold inside the denim the other bits. Now, you will find that you will run out of um, denim after a while and I have personally found that the best methodology of putting extra bits of denim on is to do a bit of basic rudimentary sewing and when I say rudimentary I mean really very um, basic sewing you know over and over to join up your next parts of denim onto it so I'm just going to carry on going around here you see I've just come back to base again so I'm going to carry on until I've run out of my denim here and I will show you how you join it up alternatively if you are not bothered or kind of rather like the um, hippie chic look you can just tie the next strip of denim to this one um, again it looks very nice I've done it when I've been making um, bangles out of rags and it's very attractive so here we go behind and under I kind of use this finger, I hold one in my finger and the one that I'm holding in my hands, there we go, we've almost finished this particular row. Um, the other thing I want to tell you about is do not worry about joining your denim together with your wire because when you replace the warps it is all joined together quite simply there. I should have mentioned this earlier and my divine videoer, who is actually really Kaylee, will tell me off for this later and she won't give me any sweeties after lunch but um, anyway I've said it now so you'll know right can you see I'm going right the way down to here before I get my denim out there's my needle and cotton here I'm going to get one strip of denim there you can see it's all being pulled in you can see I've cut my denim into about oh, I don't know centimetre and a half, two centimetre strips. What I would do next is I will get my scissors. I will lob into this. So I've got two halves exactly the same. Uh, there we go. We don't need both halves to show you this. Um, best way of putting a knot in your needle and cotton, right? Hold the end, end opposite the needle. One, two, three, four, five. Hold the needle in your fingers, push the needle up, pull it all the way down to the bottom. Isn't that magical? And you've got a nice little knot at the bottom without having to do all that twiddling stuff with your fingers here. Right, <clears throat> what I'm going to do here is, that's one side, that's the other side. I'm going to show you how basic my sewing is here. 
all right if you can be um, bothered which you should be because the the better you are the nicer the result you will get it's the sort of thing your mum used to say to you really isn't it folks there we go um, I'm just going to do a tiny little square dance here on this denim so that I know I've got a little patch sewn in but you know it's again as I said it's down to you so you can tell I'm not doing any sort of specific I'm just doing a running stitch nothing too exciting here there we go and I'm coming back to the beginning here Mm -mm -mm. You can hear the fire in the background and the birds tweeting in the garden outside. Golly, it's cold. If you're watching from the US of A or anywhere else, it's very cold in the UK at the moment. Right, there we go. I'm not even going to finish it off properly. And then all I would do is I will start with the winding process again, put it back on my bobbin. There we go. Can you see there I take more care because I want it to be twisted and not too lumpy. And then I will keep going around until I have a sufficiently thick um, denim weave. That's because when you re-warp, it's going to compress it. Now, let me move this one and do the, and here's one I made earlier. <clears throat> I'm gonna put that over there like that. Here is one I made earlier. It's not quite the same pattern as this one. This one I've done, um, with a bronze colour because it matched the button, a couple of rows of denim, more bronze, a couple of rows of denim, more bronze. All right, and I've, I've chopped into a piece of denim around the button here. And when I was working with this, I um, took the button off this particular pair of jeans. But it really is down to you what you do. Now, on this one here, I have done my second row of weaving. I've done it thicker than the bottom one. You'll see I've put a crimp in here and I have crimped it. And now I'm going to move that towards the back because I found that positioning is everything in life. There we go. And if I chop it towards the back, then it stays nearer towards the back there, okay. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do that bit which everybody asks me about. Um, I don't know why it worries you, but it shouldn't do. And that is I'm going to take out all these little warp stoppers here from the bottom. Okay. Um, and I'm going to take the weave off the disc in order that we can re-warp it pulling together all of the bits of denim and the wire and you'll see exactly what I mean about how cleverly it all comes together. You see that didn't take me very long. I'm just going to pop those away in my box over here. Use my thumbs all the way around here. Ooh, there we go, there's a naughty little chappy here. And it just helps me if I push it with my thumbs to ease the disc off much easier here. Now, one of the things I often advise is that you can put the warp stoppers on the top here. You know, if you're doing it at home, I would advocate it's a very sensible thing to do because it stops you, you know, if you're wiggling something through from pulling this off the top of here. So what you really should do, but I'm not going to do it because I don't have sufficient time and it would make your video very long is that okay i'll put one more on just so that you can see what i'm talking about and it is that okay and then what i will do next is i will get my wondrous needle i will get some of my scrumptious um, wire here and i'm going to measure out probably about three meters of wire to re-warp with. The reason I use so much is that in previous times I've used too little and you have to re-warp the whole thing again and <clears throat> it's not my favorite part of weaving. I love the weaving bit and I love the decorating what I have woven 
but I don't like the warping bit as much as I like the weave. Right, there we go. I'm going to, this wonderful two hold needle is going to come into its own now, and you'll see why. Right, one of the things, when you are weaving with a material that tends to close together, especially if you're weaving with wool or wool top, it does help having a bodkin needle, okay? And what I'm doing is I'm putting the needle through parallel to the warp stick. I'm getting my fantastic pair of pliers and I'm going to pull this wire through until I have my weaving, my bangle, in the middle here, okay? Now, I'm probably going out of frame like a lunatic now, but oh, I do love it when it happens and it comes right into the middle. Right, okay, so I've got that bit there. Now, because I know I'm doing it for you guys, I've got two needles. So hopefully I will be able to re-warp it quicker. I won't make you watch me warp the whole thing, but I will let you into another little secret of mine now that you're becoming expert weavers. So what I'm going to do with my left hand one is I'm going to go parallel again to the warp stick and I'm popping this all the way through here like this. If you're having a problem getting hold of bangle weavers, I do have some currently in stock. Um, they do whiz out as quick as I seem to get them. So they whiz out. Um, I know that uh, Beadalong will have some and you should be able to get them at you know good craft and hobby stores. Um, so that one's gone over that way. And this one will go over through here. So I'm crossing over, I hope you can see the warps here. Righty-ho, push that bit in with my fingernail up here. <clears throat> and what I like to ensure is that when I'm pushing it back through, I hold that bit in front of my warp wires, okay? Can you see now why I say it doesn't matter if you do it in three different bits here? It's all the same because your re-warping draws it all together. So I should actually revise what I said. I think it's very nice warping. It's actually one of those things which is a bit like sort of patting your head and rubbing your tummy. Um, it's something to be done in front of the telly. So I fortunately have more than one bangle weaver. And I think if you get as addicted to this um, as I am, you'll probably have more than one bangle weaver too. You'll have one that you're warping <clears throat> and one that you're weaving. So there we go, hold on, let's come up here. Do -do -do. Oops, I got caught round a pin on the other side of my board. Okay, and I'm going to put this one in here and then I'm going to show you what my little nifty trick is. And you're going to laugh probably if you're sitting at home, but uh, I don't mind if you laugh at me. Oh, no, there we go, look. That's it, it's come out of my needle. Well, you can imagine how it would be exacerbated if you didn't have a needle with two holes in. Okay, let's try again, Kleshner. I just like to show you that I'm not perfect either. You see, even I, it comes out, there we go over the top of my hands and do this. Right, now what I do when I'm making lots of these, which as you can imagine I do, is I know that I have re-warped this one. So what I do is I start popping them back into my bangle weaver as I go along. And the clever thing about doing this is that when you do that, by the time you get to doing your last warps, You've refilled your bangle weaver and you don't have to start from scratch again. Isn't that a clever little idea? Okay, so I'm going to suggest that you go away and have a cup of char whilst I finish warping this and then I will show you how and beautiful it will look when I've finished warping it. So, tatty bye for now and I'll be back with you in a little while. Okay, folks, so you will see, look, isn't this nifty? You've got almost the whole thing reset up again, and I've just got the last few warps here 
to take out. Uh, just incidentally, just another little top tip. I like to put the first um, whoops, stopper on there and then I find it easier. I normally hold it up against my sort of teddy bear belly. I find it easier to do that when I'm putting in the warp sticks. So I normally poke my warp stick through so it's kind of half out the other end, put the stopper on. It stops me shredding my fingers, which are already shredded rather badly, as you might well imagine, doing all the different crafts that I do. Um, I find it helps me not to break your nails or break your fingers by getting them all stuffed underneath somewhere. There we go. And it happens very s simply. And there, we have almost a fully made bangle. Let's just pop that one in there and then I'll get rid of this. Clunk that down over here. Right, okay. Now, one of the things I love to be able to do is at the end, instead of um, crimping the two edges together, I just quite simply sew in beyond the beginning a couple more times. There we go. And because there is pre-existing wire in there, there we go. Let's let this out a bit. You see, once it actually starts to clamp in, um, it stays clamped in, so to speak. Now, you can see I can even it out with the wire all the way around, and that's the benefit of, of crossing it. Can you see here? So what I can do is I can pull the wires all the way around to even it up. But literally, if you just sew in twice more beyond the start of where you began to warp, you will find that you won't need to put an additional crimp at the top and or at the bottom, wherever you choose to crimp it. And, you know, as the more I work with this bangle weaving tool, that was produced by the, the divine Beadalon, um, the more I learn about it. I think it's like anything. The more I do, the better I get. So, there we go. We've finished making this. All that remains to be done is snip that little bit off there. Throw that away. And snip this little bit off here. Now, in order to make, and there we go, I've got my lovely denim bangle here. Now, all that remains to be done is either to sew on a button, and what I've done here is I've actually um, stuck a 4mm chaton in the hole in the front of the button here, okay? Um, and what I've done to create this is, I have, um, do you ever remember making those little paper lanterns when you were a kid? And what you do basically is you fold a piece of paper. There we go, I've got a little bit of paper down here. Sorry about that noise. You fold it down the edge and all you do quite simply is you go like this, all the way along the edge. And what I did for the button to make that little frilly thing is I did that on a long piece of denim and then I just quite simply wrapped it around in a circle and sewed it pop that underneath here and pop that in there. And by doing that, you can create something rather similar. I love the dark denim with the sort of steely look here. Anyway, enjoy, love making your bangles, and remember, don't waste it, weave it. Bye.